This is inside Russia in the Bryansk region. In fact, it is in the specifically the Karachev region at the 67th GRAU arsenal. This was an arsenal that was already hit once. I believe it was a couple months ago when Ukraine was lighting up ammo depots left and right using drones, they claim. We're going to talk about the long-range attackums row in just a moment, but this is uh, not surprising considering that only a day ago, of course, Biden greenlit deep strikes, and we're going to have to try to flesh out that language and, and figure out what they really mean by deep strikes uh, just to prove that yesterday. And so we know that attackums have been used inside Russia already uh, because there's just a lot of evidence to suggest that that's been the case and it's not nearly as black and white as they're making out in the media in that the commanders on the ground, the guys who are using uh, and doing the targeting for the attackums, I'm pretty sure it's on a case-by-case -case basis, but now the floodgates have been officially opened, meaning it's open season. So this is going to take its attritional toll on Russia. These are not beasting insignificant attacks as some of the Russophiles like to claim. However, they're not going to be the end of Russia, as the Russophobes like to claim either. But this is the actual ammunition depot. What typically happens is a large part of the depot will be destroyed, and there will be parts of it that remain intact. Not surprisingly, this depot was actually hit not too long ago, and now it has been hit again. This isn't the massive explosion that we've seen. However, because we only have a six-second video, we can't quite see the scale of this, but it does look massive. Obviously, there could be some uh, rocket fuel that is uh, going up in flames there. Uh, it, it looks like perhaps heavier ordnance that is going up, not just artillery shells and things of that nature. I think that kind of explosion is more indicative of fuel, but I mean, wh who's to say what it is? Either way, I show you this because, of course, it's a sign that things are definitely ratcheting up. We're going to try to make sense of whether this is Biden trying to sabotage. I know Alex Jones has a very catchy soundbite, alarmist, sort of uh, intriguing uh, depiction of what's going on here. Uh, I don't think it's that cut and dry as just the Biden administration is trying to start World War III before Trump enters into office. There's probably a little bit of truth to that, but I think there's a lot of higher level collusion than people want to admit between Trump transition team and the Biden transition team. And evidence of that, in fact, is some statements by Mike Walsh today that were completely misquoted and taken out of context. And I'm going to get into all those details in just a moment, okay? But before we do that, I want to quickly talk about this. And I mean quickly, like one or two minutes. This guy right here is Mohammed Javid Larajani, and he is the Ayatollah's, Ayatollah Khamenei's top advisor in Iran. This is the top guy. So if this guy says something, that means you can pretty much think that the Ayatollah is synchronized in his point of view. Okay, he's not going to say anything that's going to have him killed. He said that Iran can achieve nuclear deterrence in 24 hours. 24 hours. Remember those early reports earlier in the year where United States uh, nuclear weapons specialists were predicting that Iran could have such and such amount of nuclear weapons within a few days? Now Iran itself, from the Ayatollah's uh, mouthpiece, is saying that they can have a nuclear weapon in 24 hours, whereas they thought, uh, or that he claimed, and this is the exact quote, our enemies predicted that it would take us 48 hours, but it's actually going to take us 24 now think about what that means. That essentially means that they would already have to have all of the uranium enriched to a sufficient degree that they could put all those components together within 24 hours to make a bomb and to put that bomb on a tried and tested weapons delivery platform like a ballistic missile that they've been testing. Uh, mysteriously, in the last few weeks, there's been several... Uh, sightings of uh, what appear to be ballistic missiles, possibly ICBMs being tested in the skies of Iran. Anyways, so what they're saying is, is that 
because in, in order to have deterrence, it's not enough just to have one bomb. Deterrence means to, to really have legit deterrence, you have to have several nuclear weapons and you have to have the ability, the tried and tested ability to use those nuclear weapons in combat. That's the only way you get deterrence. If Iran came out today and said, hey, we made one nuke, that would be the worst thing they could possibly do. Because of course, the United States and Israel would say, okay, we could probably absorb one if they can even get it off the ground. This is a multi-episode podcast that is jam-packed with eye-opening information. You won't want to miss a single episode, so tune in and follow the Audacity of Truth podcast show available exclusively on Spotify and YouTube.